got into our apartment actually Airbnb and I will highly recommend you guys to stay in this Airbnb it's awesome look at our view I know today is probably not a good day uh, it's like I'm running a lot because it's actually pretty cold it's really windy and uh, it's cloudy so it's a little bit gloomy out there and then we just test out the water earlier we were walking on there and it was really cold <laughs> it's cold and <laughs> we didn't bring our wetsuit because we would think it wouldn't be this cold on a tropical island um, for diving so we we'll probably have to rent wetsuit um, not, to not tomorrow uh, wetsuit on Wednesday the day after tomorrow um, to go on our diving trip but that's another story but check out this view it's so nice like I don't want to leave right now I just want to fall asleep on here view where are we going? so we're down the street from our Airbnb this is one of their local markets so we'll go check it out our host was telling us this is the cheapest market in town we'll see it's not so much of a market but rather a convenience store where you can buy snacks drinks and homemade items we needed some water after brunch we were told by our host water is free and where to get it so at cook island um it's really easy to get water. You go to any sink, as long as, I ha as, long as they have this kind of notice, that means the water is safe to drink. Um, there are times they check this from time to time, and then if it's red, that means do not drink this water, it's, it's bad water. If it's yellow, it's a warning. If it's blue, it's good water. So we're gonna get some water for today. You don't have to buy water. I mean, if you want, you can, but According to our host, the water is safe to drink. There you go. We have water for today. Okay. We are going to the Achutaki day tour. And then this is going to be our airplane of the day which is going to be a cute little guy. After landing on Atutaki Island and taking a short truck ride, we board the Vaka boat for the day cruise. The Vaka is hand-built by the locals and it has a comfortable covered seating as well as a deck lounge to sunbathe on. <laughs> Wow, 
while snorkeling, we saw a huge giant trevally just feet from the shore, giant clams and a super cool coral farm. And the best part, the water is ridiculously clear and crystal blue just like on the postcards. We were taught how to husk and open a coconut. Here's me cracking a coconut open now. I'm totally going to survive on a stranded island with my newfound skill. Oh, you got it! Which I thought people be needs I lost all the water. <laughs> <laughs> I lost all the water. <laughs> oh, I got some, I got some. Dean's first coconut. Success. Woo! Oh, can I see? One more time. Woo! <laughs> okay. After that, we had an amazing homestyle lunch buffet prepared by locals. It truly was an unforgettable day tour, and I can't give enough praise to the crew that made this day possible. We spent two days diving. All the dive sites were literally 10 minutes outside the lagoon's reef. There were some drop-offs to around 85 feet which makes having an advanced certification necessary. We saw only hard coral and the shapes are quite unique, unlike anything we've seen before. One dive site was even called Smurf City for good reason. Just check out the way all the corals look. Incredible. We were guided to two notable objects by our dive master. One was called Mono Aura Wreck. It was sunk for diving about 20 years ago and now home to tons of marine life. The other is called Edna's Anchor, the giant anchor with its chain still attached and hanging over a core boomy belonged to an old whaling ship from back in the day. The day after diving, we decided to check out the local brewery company called Matutu. Matutu translated means spiritually strong. They are the only brewery company on the island and their flagship beers are the pale ales and the laggers. They have seasonal beers too, but the former two are available year round. The one hour tour is available Monday through Friday and costs 10 New Zealand dollars. We had the opportunity to taste several beers they were brewing at the time while they explained in depth how they brew the beer from start to finish. Hi, so we're at the Tavara Nui um, show. We're doing the combo extravaganza, which include like a village show, followed by a buffet dinner, and then followed by a singing slash dancing kind of open show which is going to take place in the um, center stage over there and I heard it's going to be like an amazing show and then to start off with we already got our complimentary bubble and complimentary tropical juice Oromai Kathy here has a bucket list, and on her bucket list, she's always wanted to dance in front of a group of strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now we're going to crown you with our party ritual. Mm. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Kathy here is going to tell us a little bit about her holiday through her dance. So just follow me for Here we go. Here we are in the Pacific Islands. We had a great time at the cultural show. We learned a tremendous amount in a short period of time. The explanation went fast, but it was both fun and informative. We don't want to show you too much of the show out of respect for the cast and crew, but you should definitely check out the show for the entertainment factor, education, and best of all, the food. Just 
came in from Rarotonga. Which is Cook Islands. <laughs> For those that you don't know. Um, so, uh, what should we know in Rarotonga? For starters, uh, if you're going to go there, you have to either rent a car or a scooter. And depending on how much luggage you're bringing, like for us, we're divers, so we're bringing all, all of our gear. So at first we thought, you know, a scooter will be fun. It's cheaper, it's, actually. It is a lot cheaper. Yeah. It's safe to ride on the island. Yep. But we have just too much luggage to carry around with a 125cc scooter. <laughs> so for us, rent a car was the way to go. Yeah. And you definitely want to book ahead of time. Rotonga gets a lot of tourists from Australia and New Zealand. That's like their version of Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. So they're there and they rent cars and scooters like we would rent car and scooters in Hawaii. So just be prepared for that. <laughs> also, there's really no internet access um, on the island. We were being told by our host that 100 megabytes cost us seven hundred dollars, something like that. New Zealand dollars. New Zealand dollars. Which is still expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, don't plan to bring your cell phones over. Um, they do offer tourist uh, SIM card, which I think it still costs you fifty New Zealand dollars for a good seven days. So if you're not a business businessman like us, too, uh, don't go for the. It's expensive, and. Uh, so one, one thing that we learned is very important is download the Google offline map because uh, it will show you anything that you can do on regular Google map. The offline map will take care of it and it, it's it's helpful for us, especially in navigating and then finding places. GPS still works with offline map, right? GPS does work, yeah. So that was very important. Um, so yeah. activities. Right. So aside from scuba diving, which we both did Dead. on the island which was amazing mm -hmm. snorkeling can practically be free yeah there are certain zones where Great. they <laughs> there are certain zones where they don't allow snorkeling just because of the current or right. what type i think it's like a harbor so there's a lot of boat traffic yeah and, and then also there's like a passage where the uh the the deeper ocean water comes in so the uh, rip current all that stuff you, you kind of don't want to snorkel or swim over there so the island is surrounded by coral reefs right. about 200 yards offshore is this perimeter of coral reef mm -hmm. where it blocks like foot four foot waves from Something entering like into the lagoon yeah. Yeah. and the lagoon is where you will snorkel which right. is perfectly amazing. calm water amazing. crystal blue amazing amazing like so, we can't describe how amazing it yeah. is it's just like yeah. oh. they do offer snorkeling tours in the lagoon uh, depending on what kind what you want to do they do offer lunch but mm -hmm. we recommend that just you can, you could just drive anywhere park your car and go snorkeling for free yeah um, free is always nice right <laughs> and that way you can hit multiple snorkeling sites in one day right that's what we did kind of um, some spots actually offer or have somebody I guess somebody installed mm -hmm. fresh water faucets for you to rinse yeah. off your gear afterwards which is really nice you just got to look for it some places the, the faucet is literally installed on a tree trunk <laughs> it was the, really there's a hose run runs yeah. to it or another place is actual faucet that it's tied to something else so you just gotta look for it not all places have it but some yeah and then I was oh, I was also told told by the locals that the fishes in the lagoon uh, don't eat them they're poisonous uh, so if you do decide to do fishing which we both didn't do it um, just watch out I guess you have to know your fish or ask a local about the fish in the surrounding area because they, they are poisonous so do be aware of that um, well the, the 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 fish in the lagoon didn't appear very tasty anyway <laughs> they're cute they're, they're reef <laughs> fish they're, they're not big they're not yeah. meaty so there's no point of eating them go to a restaurant it's safe uh, food is fantastic there oh yeah definitely a lot of seafood uh, fresh seafood that's a key word um it's it's just nice it's very really nice um also one more thing about on the topic of food the the topic, topic of food topic. yes oh. They're not very big meat eaters. Very rarely will you find a restaurant that serves beef or pork. Mostly it is chicken and fish. Fr uh, fresh catch of the day. Yeah. It's usually mahi-mahi or 
tuna. Tuna, tuna. Yeah. Tuna. And it's it's prepared either uh, crispy fried. Yeah. What do they call fried. it? Uh, fish and chips. Fish and chips style yeah. or grilled. Um, oh, definitely yeah. try both. Very tasty. So they they do these huge Turkish sandwich fish fish sandwiches. <laughs> Which you will see in our video. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it's advertised every, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere sells sandwiches like that. And yeah. it's it's a little ex on the expensive side for a sandwich, but definitely two people can be fed from that single sandwich. It's huge, yeah. And then also, uh, while you're driving on the road or crossing the road, there's dogs everywhere, there's chickens everywhere as well. Um, Insert joke here. <laughs> so... It's, it's, it's a fun place. It's a lovely little island and it's not too touristy at this point. It was kind of described to us as oh, yeah. Hawaii 100 years ago, maybe not 100 years ago, I would say maybe 50 years ago where it's not very touristy yet. Um, it's nice. It, it, all the houses run off solar power or they have their own water barrel. So it, it's, it's very nice. utilitarian. Yeah. It, it's very nice. Um, we really enjoyed it. Um, we also hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do like it, like it, sum up, and then leave a comment. We welcome any kind of comment. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're still beginner at this, uh, but we hope we'll bring wonderful videos to you guys in the future. Yeah. And see you guys next time. Bye.